Hey guys, so I'm back with another Epic 7 video. So we have a new update here that I want to go over quickly. So we have the new Summerside story. They also showed Angel of Light Angelica. Literally, it's been a year since they showed this unit. This Angelica was the last image on the video they made last year for their anniversary. So we have Angel of Light and Angelica. It's a light unit and a mage. Stats are pretty decent, decent speed, pretty good defense and health. Attack is on the lower side, not one of these over a thousand, but based on the skill kit, this kind of distribution works. Also has an imprint concentration for effectiveness. You'll see why once we get into the skills. So skill two is Guardian of Light, immune to stun, and when an ally except for the caster is attacked, increases combat readiness of the caster by 8% for each attacked ally. When suffering an attack that targets all allies, has a 75% chance to activate Guardian Angel. Guardian Angel can only be activated once every three turns. So Guardian Angel dispels one debuff from all allies before granting skill nullifier once. So that's a really great ability. Her skill 3 is Judgment of Angels, dispels 2 buffs from all enemies with Holy Light before a 70% chance to make them unable to be buffed for 2 turns and silencing for 1 turn. This obviously has a higher effect chance than 70% because you're getting some from the skill enhancements, you're getting 30 from the skill enhancements, so it'll, it will be 100% after skill enhancements. So skill 1 is Ritualistic Touch, attacks the enemy with fragments of a shimmering star with a 50% chance to silence for one turn. When the target is silenced after attacking, decreases combat readiness of the target by 25%. Of course, that goes up again, the effect chance as well after skill enhancement. And this one has a soul burn that increases effect chance to 100%. And yeah, she looks super cute. I've always loved Angelica a lot. The unfortunate part is she's once again on the Mystic Rotation as a 4-star unit, so you're not even guaranteed to get her at all. It's kind of unfortunate that they don't have a pity system integrated for 4-stars. So we also have the Coin Shop Rotation is changing on September 1st all the way until the 30th. So we have Faithless Lydica and Ambitious Tywin in the ML Shop. And Kisei and K-Ron in the regular shop. So the expeditions are also changing. So we'll have the fire one again. The dark one and the water one. And the next mystic rotation is going to be Specimen Says and Angelica. Which will happen on September 9th all the way until the 30th. So the title screen will be changed for the summer event. The side story is the same stuff all the time, guys. You collect items, you buy stuff out of the shop, you use artifacts to increase the amount that you get every time you do a run. It's all the same stuff, copy and paste, that you've seen with every side story. All the different stage levels. They have a mini game this time with this volleyball tournament. It's just a little mini game. Nothing too insane. Same stuff. You buy stuff out of the shop with the items. You get all of these as main rewards. So this is the artifact for the event. Increases critical hit chance of all allies by 5%. After attacking with a single attack, deals 100 fixed damage to a random enemy except for the target. This artifact skill effect can only be applied to one hero within a team. So, yeah, nothing too insane. People use these to do stuff like Hall of Trials and Expeditions or Abyss or whatever, just to bump up your stats just a little bit. People like using the attack one and the effectiveness one sometimes. So, these don't really have value in terms of PvP, but in some of the PvE content, people use it to boost their stats. So we have a new 5-star ML. We all know about him already. Charles. They've already shown him before. So I'm not going to really go over any of this. He looks pretty cool. He's another evasion type unit. 
We'll see how good he performs. So we have two new banners, Ball and Sermia, obviously, with Summer Seria coming out. I don't know why you would get into these banners. You really always want to summon for the limited units because they go away and then you'll have to wait a year before they return. These units will have banners again. You can get them in other ways. So I always think that these are a pretty firm skip. Especially when there's limited heroes like right around the corner. So Emma Leo is getting adjustments and a recall. So his fire shock bomb skill is triggered differently from its description. So the description is going to be adjusted to match the actual effects. So he's scheduled to be adjusted on September 2nd. I actually do not have Leo. He is the only four star unit I do not have. I've dodged him every time he was on a banner. Um, so there, season two is being extended all the way until November, actually. So they added some stuff. They added Leafs, which is really good. And the Phantasmas and stuff are fine. Helps you upgrade units. And then there's other improvements and adjustments. I'll let you guys read that. It's really basic stuff in there. So we also have Summertime Asaria. She's a Fire Ranger and a Capricorn. She has high attack. Pretty darn good speed. 115. And her health and defense aren't too crazy. But they're not too bad. She also gets effectiveness as her imprint. You'll see why based on her kit. Let's go into her kit. So her skill 2 is Suppression Attempt. Does not cost any souls to activate the caster's first soul burn. The caster cannot trigger a critical hit, but attack increases by 20%. After an ally except for the caster uses an attack that targets all enemies, activate suppress. Can only be activated once every three turns. And suppress increases combat readiness of all allies by 15% and plants a bomb on two random enemies for two turns. So she's another bomb unit. I know people are going to go crazy with that one because bombs aren't really considered to be that great, but she has a lot of other stuff in her kit. Skill 1 is Are You the Culprit. Attacks the enemy with swords with a 60% chance to dispel two buffs. The soul burn effect is grants an extra turn. So, remember the skill 2, you can do this without soul burning based on the skill 2. And her skill 3 is Sword of Flowers, attacks all enemies with Swords of Flowers, decreases attack for 2 turns, and increases speed of the caster for 2 turns. At the end of the turn, detonates bombs inflicted on the enemy. So she does have a detonation, which is really good. So detonate is inflicts damage by activating designated debuffs inflicted on the enemy. So the damage is proportional to the number of turns and number of debuffs. Bomb damage is unaffected by the number of turns. So, you know, she has a decreased attack that she could do. She'll have the detonate. She'll be really good with people who put on debuffs because when you detonate it, it will do more damage based on how many debuffs are on the enemies. So she'll work really well with other units that have debuffs. So this is her artifact, Star of the Deep Sea. When a non-critical hit is made after using a basic skill, has a 50% chance to plant a bomb on the target for two turns. This effect is only applied to single attacks and is not activated by a counterattack, dual attack, or extra attack. And at max, it goes to 100% chance to plant a bomb target for two turns. So she looks really cute. I like her sitting animation. She looks cute. And that's this area. So the next couple of weeks will be kind of interesting with the new units coming out. Between Charles, Asaria, and Angelica. So it's something to look forward to, definitely. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I would really appreciate it if you subscribed. It's a really great way to support content creators like me for all these videos that we work really hard to put out. So I would greatly appreciate it if you subscribed. Leave a like and comment as well. I always read them. And that's it for this one.
So I'll see you soon. Bye.